Ego the projection of mind dreams. All our dreams are the projections of ego. And ego is your enemy, not a friend. Indeed, ego is a deep desire to dominate. Everyone has a deep desire to dominate. And that desire to dominate is ego. Ego is a deep desire that says I am special, higher, bigger and greater than you. Very often you would have observed people saying I am very special. This child is very special and things like these. The ego does not and cannot live in the present because the present is real and ego is false. So the false and the real never meet. If ego is fulfilled through giving, nothing is being given. Ego cannot share. The ego can never be generous. That is not in the nature of ego to share or to be generous. The ego is your enemy, not your friend. It is the ego that gives you wounds and hurts you. It is ego that makes you violent, angry, jealous and competitive. It is ego that continuously goes on comparing and feeling miserable. You are divine only when you are nobody. You are nobody because you have dropped your ego. It's not that you have to drop your ego, instead ego drops on its own. You are divine only when you are nobody and you are nobody because you have the ego is dropped and you have allowed God to enter in you. When you are somebody, you are just an ugly ego and you have closed the doors for God to enter within because God and your ego cannot exist together. They are just like darkness and light. You cannot have them both together. Self-consciousness means ego consciousness and self-awareness means soul consciousness. Self-consciousness implies ego consciousness and self-awareness implies soul consciousness. Your ego is a false entity because you have so much money or so much power or so much respectable family or your education or your status in life. All these things constitute your ego. But your soul comes with you when you are born when you was nobody, therefore it has nothing to do with anything else. Whether you are educated or uneducated, nothing matters. Kabir was uneducated and so was Jesus. Indeed, it does not matter whether you come from a respectable family or not. What really matters is your awareness and your being. Sufi says, pray in such a way that nobody knows. Why? For the simple reason that ego is very cunning. It wants to boast. Ego wants to boast even about religion, about spirituality, about prayer, and about meditation. It wants to brag for everything that it can. 
really does not matter what ego boasts about. Ego will boast about money, meditation, power and about prayer too. You would have heard the people saying, I pray really hard. I meditate deeply, I do deep meditations. All these are the functions, trips of ego. Ego wants to boast and claim, I am doing something special, great and extraordinary. Never think that I am nobody or I am somebody. When people quarrel among themselves, husband and wives, they say, do you think I am nobody? The very thought will keep you lost in the mire of ego. Remember, what, whatever is imposed upon you is non-essential and in the process it creates your personality. The essential is your individuality, the non-essential is your personality. The word personality comes from the word persona. The mask faces that you put on on you. The existence is a blend of essential and non-essential. In other words, essential is your very soul, your being, and non-essential is your ego. All that helps the ego is non-essential, and all that helps you to become egoless is essential. Ambition is non-essential, greed is non-essential, desire, any kind of desire is also non-essential. When you surrender, you move from mind to surrender. Indeed, it is the quantum leap from mind to no mind, from ego to egolessness. And in a single step, the whole journey is encompassed. It is not a long journey from you to God. Instead, it is a single step journey. It is not a gradual phenomenon. It is not that gradually you come to the divine. Instead, it is a quantum leap. One moment you are in darkness, and next moment you are in light. The only difference is the switch is turned on. All that is needed is to put the ego aside. Ego is always whole oriented. It is greedy and is always grabbing. It is always searching for more and more and more. Ego lives in the more. Ego lives in the more and cannot survive otherwise. If you have money, ego wants to have more. On the other hand, if you have a house, it wants to have a bigger house. Indeed, it always wants more. However, it does not matter what it wants. Anything will do. Certainly, it must be more. The ego is always hungry and it continues to swing between the future and the past. It laments for the bygone and hopes for the future. In the past, it lives accumulations, this and that and everything. It gets satisfaction in holding this and that. It, in doing so, it gets a great satisfaction. It claims, I have got something, power, prestige or money. It gives a kind of reality to it. It gives a notion that when I have these things, I must be there. And it lives in the future with the idea of more. Ego lives as memory and as desire. The moment you put the ego aside, the, certain, the curtain is no more. 
God is hidden no more, still your eyes are closed, only your eyes are closed, open therefore your eyes and ego is vanished. The ego is the problem and the last obstacle and this is the reason that you cannot know yourself. Ego gives you a certain false images of yourself and if you carry those images for a long time, fear breaks in. There is fear that if your image fails, then your identity will be broken. You create a false face and then you become afraid. If this false face falls, who will you be? You will go mad. You have invested too much in it and everybody thinks about himself in such lofty and false tunes. And when nobody agrees with him or approves him, then your ego thinks that everybody is wrong. Ego exists as hallucination. Remember, you are not separate from the home, but you have been conditioned to forget this. Then you go on trying to be. This creates the whole mystery. Trying to do something which is not possible is bound to create misery. Misery is unnatural. It is your invention and a gift from the society. Misery does not exist. Indeed, it is a nightmare created by your society and the priests. It is a great work of the society. The ego is the center of all your sleep and dreaming. If you can put the ego aside, recognizing it as a false thing, there will be no need to go on carrying it. Put the ego aside, and in fact there is no need to put it aside either. Just recognize that it is false. This recognition will help you to be free from the ego on its own accord. And the moment it drops, a tremendous explosion happens in you. For the first time you are awake, totally awake. There is no unconscious or darkness in you. All becomes light and illuminated. For this explosion of light or hallucination, we use the word enlightenment. You are pure light, made of light. This is eternal light and when you open your eyes and look at existence you will realize the whole existence is made of light and that is life. Ego exists not. How can you drop something which does not exist? And Buddha has not said that ego has to be dropped. He is saying the ego has only to be looked into and you do not find it. Hence it disappears. What can you do then when you go inside your being and you do not find any ego? Instead you find utter silence. No self-dominating no center like an ego exists there. Dropping the ego does not mean that you have to drop it or you have something tangible that you have to drop it. Or it is something that you can hold in your hand and then go to drop in the garbage bin. Dropping the ego is only a metaphor. It simply means that when you go in and look, you do not find anything. In that looking, the ego disappears. In fact, even to say ego disappears is not right because in the first instance it was not there. This is a misunderstanding. The mind relies on something else is illegitimate self 
to the ego. The ego cannot exist without props, it wants props. Mind creates props as fear and ignorance to support ego. Ego survives on fear and ignorance. Once all props have been removed, the ego falls to the ground and disappears. It gets shattered and disappears. But only when ego falls to the ground does that consciousness arise in you that is that But only when the ego falls to the ground does that consciousness arise in you. This is eternal, timeless and deathless. You have to move through fire and only in that fire your ego drops. Looking at the whole ugliness of it, it drops automatically. This is why Sufis emphasize that without working on the props of ego, the journey to higher realm is impossible. Once ego vanishes, you are ordinary. It is ego that wants to be extraordinary. To be ordinary is the greatest. To be ordinary is the greatest virtue. When you are just ordinary, nothing to claim of this world or that, the ego disappears. The ego feeds on imbalance and on extremes. The ego lives on the polarities. It cannot exist in the middle. And in every area, in every direction of life, remember this. Just stop in the middle and soon you will find the mind has stopped. The ego has stopped. When there is nothing to claim it disappears. You have moved from mind to no mind. And when it disappears you have become virtuous. Now the door is open for the divine. In the middle you meet him. At the extremes you miss. Hell is for all extraordinary people. They may be in politics, art or literature, wherever they are. Remember one thing always, hell is for all geniuses, for extraordinary people and egoists. Ego is the hell. It gives you suffering. With ego, with ego, Unnecessarily you start conflicting with everything. You are never at ease. Un as uneasiness becomes your style of life. Ego is a discomfort just as a nail in the shoe that continuously pinches. But you want to be extraordinary and look extraordinary as well. Such are the ways and the means of ego. Just understand this and in that very understanding the ego disappears.